Praise God, everyone. I hope we are all fine. This is Pastor Sandra Bangana here with a Broken and Mended series. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this is Pastor Sandra from the Road Redemption Ministries. The Road Redemption Ministry, sorry, the Broken and Mended series is a program that runs every Tuesday. Um, and it addresses singles, single parents, and marriage consecutively. If this week I'm talking to the singles, next week I'll be talking to the marriage, the other week I'll be talking to the single parents. But then there are times I preach and I'm speaking to the three groups generally. So either way, I'm always here on Tuesday and I'm glad to walk this journey of marriage with you. I'm glad to walk this journey of singlehood with you. I'm glad to walk this journey of single parenting with you. And in whatever place you are in, God is with you. The Bible says he will never leave you or forsake you. Praise God. So today, I'm here to talk to um, the single parents. If you're single, if you're married, you can still listen in because what I'm going to share may help you one way or the other, you know, but I'm particularly addressing the single parents. Praise God. And my message is entitled, Don't Lose Self. Don't Lose Self. I would start by saying, they are single parent, they are single mas, they are single dad, they are single mom. You are great. You are a warrior. God is proud of you for the amazing work you're doing. You know? Can you imagine? Excuse me. Can you imagine? You're the last woman standing after that breakup. Can you imagine you're the last man standing after that breakup? Or after whatever happened, the confusion, the distractions, the, the stress. <laughs> Excuse me. Praise God. Sorry, I'm trying to settle down. You are great. You are resilient. You are powerful, you are a warrior, you're strong. And God is very proud of you. Because you help you you're working hand in hand with him to raise an entire generation. You may look at it as something normal, but it's so great an assignment, so powerful an assignment that to have you stand in the gap. And be the mother to, you're supposed to be to those children or the father that you're supposed to be to those children. Heaven cannot fail to recognize your efforts. You are serving God through those children you don't know, but I'm here to remind you. And the Bible says he is not unfaithful to forget the works you are doing for his children. Praise God. I may have to talk about don't lose self. It would be the title for my message. Don't lose self. Don't lose self. Do you know you can lose yourself without knowing? And by the end of this message, some of you are going to understand that you've lost yourself. You just don't know. So at times in life when something becomes no more, there is a way you make it normal, but you make it your new normal, yet at times it's abnormal, actually. You know? You've lost yourself. You've lost touch of who you used to be. And God wants you back on track. Praise God. You no longer go out by yourself. It's always work, children, 
bills, market, this, that, debts, that, what, what. He's nothing like you, you, no, no, no. You're so lost. You're so engrossed in your responsibility of being a single parent that you've forgotten yourself. And in this message, we want to see you back. You no longer go out by yourself. You no longer go on dates anymore. You no longer go out to meet friends for fun. Your life is always serious, uptight, boring. You no longer identify with your hobbies. You don't even know what it means to be happy. It's like you're on a cross and you have to carry this cross, cross till end of time. That's not God's will for you. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. God's will for you is not to be there wallowing in loneliness, in despair, in sorrow, in regrets, in, in pressure, in stress. Much as you're raising those children, God doesn't leave you alone. You're not alone. And you need to realize that and therefore relax and have some fun. Listen, you need to withdraw sometimes. The only way you cannot lose self is when you learn to withdraw sometimes. People that don't know how to withdraw are people who end up always tired. Your, your children come to you, leave me alone, I'm tired. I, I don't trust, don't start, don't start, don't stress me. I'm tired. I, I want to be alone. I, I want to rest. Ah, my head is paining. I always have these constant migraines. Like, you, you even shut everybody around you. You, 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 you lost yourself. People who lose themselves at times end up depressed. You live a depressive life. You're always in worry, deep thoughts, anxiety disorders people who lose themselves are people who don't know who they are anymore at times you no longer know what you stand for what your purpose is what your strengths are what your weaknesses are you there the wind just comes and takes you and it brings you back whenever it wishes you need to withdraw sometimes from that responsibility from those burdens you carry, from that pain you feel, from that emptiness you feel, from the realities of things. Praise God. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter nine, verse 10, NIV, When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus that, they, that where, what they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. You see that? They withdrew by themselves. They withdrew to themselves. You don't withdraw with your children or raise. You don't withdraw with your bills or raise. No, you withdraw to yourself. You withdraw to yourself. When you learn to withdraw to yourself, you can never lose self because you're always in touch of the patterns of your life and your journey. There's someone listening to me. You don't even know where you are now. You don't even know the next chapter of your life. You're there. You live each day as it comes. Hmm? The book of Mark chapter 6, NIV. Verse 30 to 32. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and told. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. You see that? They are so busy that I can't even have time to eat. He's like, you know what? You need to withdraw sometimes to a quiet place and get some rest. You see?
praise God. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place, a quiet place. Do you ever do that? It may not even necessarily mean you leaving home and going out. You can withdraw within yourself or within your home. But all I know is you need to withdraw sometimes. Why do you need to withdraw? You need to withdraw to take care of self. Just go out and relax. Hmm? Do you know? Last week, I think it's two weeks ago, last week, if I'm not mistaken, I was so exhausted. So I simply woke up from my bed. I was feeling so down. I was feeling so sickly. Not that I was, anything was happening to me. My whole body was tired. And I remember just getting up, taking a shower, driving into a hotel, and went into the spa area of that hotel. And I remember being there for four hours. My, 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 my husband later joined me, and he was waiting for me in the parking lot. He respected the fact that I needed that time to myself. So I was there for four hours, relaxed. Just, I remember I was sitting in that... Um, what do they call it? What do they call it? Not a sauna. What, what's the other thing? I was sitting, I, I, and I thank God I was there alone. I think it wasn't yet time for people to come and utilize the services. It was in working hours. I prefer those moments. So I walk in there, and I'm alone in that room, you know, and I'm detoxing and I'm, I'm refreshing. And as I'm doing that, I'm also reflecting on my life. I'm, I'm reflecting on my journey. I'm having fellowship with the Holy Spirit by myself. I don't have a phone to myself, nothing. It's just me and me. Not even my husband can enter that zone. Not even my children can enter that zone. My phones are off and it's me and me alone. And I remember something, as I was leaving the spa to meet my husband in the parking lot, I remember I was feeling so fresh. I was feeling so whole. I was feeling so full. Now, that meant my cup has been refilled and now I am ready to fill into other cups, the cups of my children, the cups of my husband, the cups of the congregation. You see that? If you don't learn to withdraw to refill your fuels, you'll have nothing to offer your children. You'll have nothing to pour into the lives of those people that want you because you can't give what you don't have. You can't fuel your children, you can't fuel your family. If you don't have the fuel so you need to refuel yourself do you know that cars need servicing to run machinery computers everything needs service what makes you think a computer needs service and not you a human being Some of you have nothing to pour into the lives of your children simply because you're empty. You can't pour love into them, you're empty. You can't pour compassion into them, you're empty. You can't pour uh, positive vibes into them, you're empty. You can't pour um, anything in them apart from the money you're giving them as you're supporting them because you're empty. Why are you empty? You, you lost yourself. You don't know who you are, so you can't define another if you don't know who you are so one you need to withdraw that you may take care of yourself you relax choose which ways you can relax you can relax watching a movie on my relaxing days 
every week i have one day to relax every week i have one day to rest and on that day every week i choose what i will do that week should my day come there's when i choose to say i am going to be in bed the whole day my phone switched off just watching movies and ordering for food uh, get cook for me this for lunch cook for me this for breakfast cook for me this for evening i just i call it the lazy tuesdays i just the, this one i just want to spoil myself i'll put on a movie i don't normally watch movies but there is that day in a week where i can sit and watch a movie one movie like this others I, this time i had lost myself i didn't know who i felt old actually i didn't know i had lost everything that defines sandra before she became a pastor you see that and as i'm watching that movie my husband has gone to work the kids have gone to school so i'm in the house alone the workers are out there working and i'm laughing i'm taking my drink you know don't think uh taking care of yourself or relaxing means you have to go out even in your home you can do it some of you that follow my blog my marriage my home my marriage diaries on on tiktok uh, youtube facebook and instagram you'll notice that i create an atmosphere around my home i don't need to go out so that's me i can create an atmosphere in my bedroom i can create an atmosphere in the compound like life the bible says the spirit of god in is without limit you can do absolutely anything you see that so re withdraw to take care of yourself two withdraw to reflect on this journey of single parenting and if i talk about reflection one of the things i remember vividly in my journey of being a single parent i used to reflect at the patterns of my journey i'm a person that loves looking at patterns of my life that has been me by the way from i, I think high school i think it's a gift in me and as I'm patterning, I'm looking at the patterns of my life. It, it, it builds my faith. Let me give an example. You're a single parent. And you've withdrawn just to reflect on your journey. Remember when this was so flesh, sorry, fresh, when you had just broken up from that man or from that woman. The pain, the drama around it. The, the pulling of ropes. You know, the wounds incurred the moments you didn't have money to take care of the children the moments you felt as if you're failing them the moment you felt as if you're alone and then look at where you are now probably you're in a better place you now have a job you're healed you no longer you know chase after your ex you you can take care of every bill without having to worry your kids are happy going to school Hmm? Now you look at that and the patterns of the previous times before things got better and look at the transformation and you're like, wow, see how far I have come. Now I believe that where the, see the mountains have jumped, see the valleys have jumped, see the traps have, have overcome. So it gives you courage to look ahead of the mountains that are ahead of you. And you're like, I shall surely overcome this too. It gives you grace for tomorrow. You see? I used to look at, um, one, one day I was reflecting and I reflected on, on that time when I was, you know, so in need of my ex and I was crying out to him to, to come to us. And I remember, by the time I was reflecting, I was in a place where I no longer think of him. And I remember saying, wow, God, you are in control. If I could let go of those stupid emotions, it, I can't even say it was me. It was you. So it means I can let go of everything I worry about. You see? Look at the patterns of your life. And as you look at those patterns, look at God in them. 
don't don't neglect the god part that the part of god in your journey it will give you courage for tomorrow praise god three withdraw to give attention to those that are desiring you apart from your children maybe it's your friends that are missing you maybe it's your mother or father that is missing you maybe it's your siblings and there is a space that no longer sees you simply because you withdrew to yourself you lost yourself maybe someone wants to take you out but you don't give them time you're always telling them i'm busy the kids i'm in hospital uh, i'm at school for the kids i'm visiting them on visitation day hey? can you withdraw and give attention to those people that are calling you that need your attention apart from the children you're the light of the world there is a spot where you need to go in and illuminate your light it could be in a relationship it could be in a family but then if you're not there how shall we see the light that you are the joy you add to some people's hearts when you go in there and pour into their lives what god has placed in the inside of you you know uh with the other thing is withdraw to make goals and plans what's your purpose is god's purpose for you to be a single parent all your life you see that or does he want you to get married again okay if he wants you to get married again do you agree with him that you can what steps are you taking where do you want to see yourself in the next 10 years some of you are not seeing that you're just working on the kids you're forgetting 10 years from now your kid is 15 to the 10 years from now your kid will be 25 out of home and then you'll be alone drawing to them you know entering into their business because you, you didn't nurture your own life so you want you want your child to live your life yet now it's time for them to live their life you fear to be lonely so you hold on to them you get desperate you get bitter you get why because you lost yourself in that journey and you're trying to take a hold of people to see that you redefine yourself but people cannot also give themselves to you in such a manner they needed to impart them and not to draw them down so where do you want to see yourself in the next 10 years happily married your kids graduated going to school are you allowing people to come into your life to date you or you closed in you want to see yourself as a mother a future mother or future father who is not stressed with finances are you saving well enough are you working well enough are you strategizing well enough to see that kind of life for your children? Where well, you're not stressed single-handedly to take care of all the bills? So we withdraw to make goals, to make plans. Where do you want to see your career? Hmm? Do you even ever consider going back to school or it's just about you educating my children? What else can you do apart from the daily routine that can make your life more interesting? You see that? The other thing is withdraw to discover self. Try new things. You, you're now very fearful. You're always full of fear. But that's not who you used to be. Withdraw to, to reconnect and ask, where did this fear come from? What does God say about fear? How do I come out of fear? You see that? What else am I created to do? Am I just an accountant? What more can I do? Discover yourself. The other thing is withdraw to appreciate self. Do you know you work so hard? You're doing a job that is supposed to be for two people. You're doing it single-handedly. So, there should be moments where you withdraw to appreciate yourself and say, you know what? You have done great. I am proud of you, Sandra. Keep on. You've achieved this. You've achieved that. 
So take yourself out and eat something nice. Take yourself on a vacation if you can afford. You know, do, buy yourself a new cloth. Take yourself to the salon. Have a spa date. Praise God. Don't bury yourself on in raising the children. The other thing is withdraw to have fellowship with God. Now I'm going to talk about this in a way of relating to how I used to do this. I will never forget those days when I used to sit before God like at 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm like just talking to him about my life, where I am, where the child has reached. God, I thank you. My daughter now has two teeth. I am so happy. I love the way you're, you're growing her into this beautiful girl. I thank you for the new job that you brought in. At least we are no longer stressed financially. You're taking good care of us. And as you're fellowshipping with him, look at him as a husband and as a father to your children. You see that even though you're a man, you're a church, the Bible says, so he's your husband. And when you go into those, have those fellowships whereby it's not you asking for a job or what, no, it's just you and God regarding your journey as a single parent. I remember I used to tell him in those moments, you know what, God, it's 3 a.m. and this house is full of women. It's only two women in this house. The, the, puzzle, the equation is not balancing. We need a man in this home. Bring a man that will protect us. We need a man that will protect us to provide for us so do you have those fellowships whereby it's just you and god on this journey like take hold of us walk with us we give you our right hand side walk with us talk to him about your children father uh Lo 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 lois is no longer performing well in class she's your daughter help me there you're going to see burdens lifting off your chest if you start fellowshipping with god as a husband and as the father to your children. Praise God. Now, do you know you need to plan for your life after the kids have gone? Do you even ever plan for that life? Or are you just mining about today? Hmm? Praise Jesus. As you're doing these things I'm teaching you today to do, you're not going to lose yourself and you'll help your children find themselves because they need you to direct them. Your children don't need the broken you. They don't need the angry you. They don't need the disappointed you. No, they need a better version of you. When you do the things I'm telling you, life will start being fun. You'll start appreciating single parenting and not curse it. Not that you're comfortable with it, but you're learning to live amidst the storm as you surrender to the storm, to, to the God that controls the storm. By doing the things I'm telling you to do, when the children leave, you'll not leave. Why? Because you have a life to live. Single parenting is not a cross. It's a normal journey that you transition it through to a, another version of your life. So in case you're listening in and you've been this person who has lost self, there are things you used to desire doing, you no longer do them. There is a version of you the world no longer sees. It's time to get back yourself. Praise God. I hope this message will impact you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today's word that is belonging to the single parents. Help someone tonight find themselves in the name of Jesus. Take hold of their hand and help them. Take hold of the hand of that man, of that woman, and help them. 
You're the father to their children. You're their husband in the name of Jesus. Bring peace to their lives that surpasses all understanding. Take hold of their hand and help them. I agree and believe with each and every one of them that there is joy in the morning and victory at the end of this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you were blessed. In case you're listening in and you've never given your life to Jesus, do you realize you can't do things by yourself? You need him. Do you realize you need God? So if you're listening in and you're like, Pastor Sandra, I need to surrender my life to him. Just repeat after me and say, Dear God, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my past sins. I embrace forgiveness through faith in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare with my lips after believing with my heart that you sent Jesus to die for me and give me resurrection, a hope, a future, an expected end. So today I acknowledge his efforts on that cross by surrendering my life to him and saying Jesus is the only Lord of my life. And from today on, I'm born again. And Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you all. Have a good night. See you this Friday as we join together, hands in agreement, in the service. Love you. Bye.